The Terrace Hastings in Dover were the masters of the midday. Us. Us. We roll 10 to 2 every single weekday and joining us on the hotline right now. Latest Denver Nugget after a draft night deal was done. He is RJ Hampton here on the home of your Denver Nuggets. RJ, Josh Dover, Ryan Harris, and Scott Hastings. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you guys? We're good, man. We're fired up uh, to get you here. Uh, congratulations to you for, one, you know, li- living out your dream and becoming an NBA player. Uh, I want to ask you first about your relationship with Mike Miller, RJ. We're learning all about it, and uh, he he's said some great things about you. Two questions I have about the relationship. He said your time overseas uh, helped you learn roles on the basketball court, and also he says you learned how to be told no. Will you tell us what he meant by that? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, me being a five-star recruit, you know, out of high school, um, I was never told no, uh, really, except by anyone but my dad. Um, you know, different <laughs> coaches, um, they, they kind of cater to you because of the position you're in. Uh, I, I've learned to go overseas uh, and, and be told no. Uh, I've going, um, I learned overseas and, you know, had to accept a role and play within myself. Uh, and I think that's only going to make me better, um, you know, coming into the NBA and with a great organization like the Nuggets. When, when was the first time, RJ, that you learned when you were over there, you went, dog, I ain't the best yet? Yeah, uh, I think it wasn't even that. I just think it was like physicality and just mental. Um, you know, I feel like I always had the, you know, basketball God given talent, but I think it takes a lot of more work uh, in the weight room and it takes a lot more work in the film study uh, that I just hadn't caught on to be, being 18 years old. So, uh, learning that throughout the season, you know, there was definitely times where you, you look up and you're like, hey, like, I think I'm better than this guy, but, you know, I didn't watch film on this guy and he watched film on me. Um, so, you know, that's where uh, the, the problem, you know, lies sometimes with young guys. But I think once you figure out, um, you know, ways to beat, you know, people um, other than just with your skill or your talent, uh, that takes you to the next level. RJ, congratulations. And when you talk about what you learned there overseas, are you happy you made that decision to, to take a year away from college basketball here in the States and, and go and play a different type of talent? I definitely think I, I, I'm, I'm very satisfied with my time over there. Um, you know, I played with a lot of great guys on my team and then just against a lot of great guys who are, you know, 27, 28, 30 years old, you know, veteran overseas players. Uh, and that's just only going to prepare me, you know, for the rigors of the NBA uh, and being able to, you know, withstand the season, the physicality, um, and then just everything that comes with professional basketball. What are you looking forward to in terms of playing back in the States? I mean, is it just a cheeseburger after the game, or, or what's something <laughs> that you're like, all right, I get to play basketball in the States again? Um, probably being on TV. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, <laughs> nice. you know, a lot of college guys got to be on TV playing games. Um you know, New Zealand, it was kind of hard to catch our games because they were either super early over here or super late over here. But, you know, being on TV and, you know, showcasing, you know, my talents and then, you know, showcasing what, you know, the Denver Nuggets and our organization have to bring this year. Hey, did you ever go and look at you and see where they, they filmed the Lord of Rings or anything while you were there? <laughs> yeah, we went over there once. Oh, that's kind of cool. Did it live up to the hype or were you like, where, where, where's Voldemort? What's going on here? Nah, New Zealand's a beautiful country, so really all of it looks like Lord of the Rings, honestly. <laughs> We're talking to RJ. Hey, listen, R- RJ, Voldemort right there. I, you haven't seen Lord of the Rings either? I don't know. They're all the same to me, God, RJ. I get mixed idiot. up. You're being an idiot in front of our young guest. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, RJ, I want to ask you, you mentioned the Nuggets, the, this organization, in the Western Conference Final uh, a season ago here, and obviously trending in the right direction. Uh, a guy like Nikola Jokic, you ever seen a guy like that? You ever play with anybody, a big man that likes to play the way Joker likes to play? Uh, honestly, I haven't. You know, I think he's a very, he's a very, very different, you know, big man. Um, you know, he's, he, he has a special talent for it. What, what, what did you know about the Nuggets before this draft, and what, what have you Off learned hand. since? What, what, say that one more time. I said, what did you know about the Nuggets before this draft, and what, what have you learned since? Um, you know, before this draft, like just watching those guys um, throughout this, you know, last NBA season, you know, throughout the bubble, 
Um, they play together. Um, they play as a team. Um, they fight hard. You know, two, three, one downs. Uh, they didn't quit. So I know, you know, there's some dogs on this team for sure. And I think, you know, things that I'm learning now is just like a family culture. Uh, the organization is really big on family. Uh, the guys really like each other. And that's why they respond to each other so well and why they respond to Coach Malone so well. So uh, I'm big into family, big into, you know, being there for teammates. So I think that's, that's one thing that I'm looking forward to. Talking to R.J. Hampton, draft pick for your Nuggets. R.J., what have the Nuggets told you in terms of how they expect you to progress and, and play a role on this team this year? Um, I think the biggest thing the Nuggets told me, they like my versatility. Um, my, like my versatility being able to guard positions one through three. Uh, and I feel as if, you know, whatever the team needs me to do, um, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm a very versatile player. So, you know, uh, yeah, I think they expect for me, uh, to come in and, you know, be a fast-paced player, but, you know, work hard and, you know, get better every single day. Hey, hey tell me the story about the, the – was it your, your grandpa or who was it that was tossing the hats around there on draft night? <laughs> yeah, it was my dad. Um, so, like, we – um, I think because, like, the trades were going on, our right. TV was delayed. So, like yeah. – we didn't know if the camera was on me, and like I, like my dad had told me like the day before, he was like, "I just don't want you to have like the team that that picks you, like that picks you, and then trades you hat on." So like if that hat's in there, we have to get that hat out of there if there's a trade that happens. And sure enough, there was a trade that happened, and I was literally about to put the hat on. He was like, "No, we're not doing that. Take that Nuggets hat, and put it on." <laughs> good on him, man. It was good. Hey, on him. It hey, was I, awesome, ain't even, I ain't even met him, and I like your pops already, man. <laughs> Nah, he's a fool. He's crazy. <laughs> We're talking to R.J. Hampton. A couple more minutes with you, R.J. We appreciate your time, man. Uh, I want to get back to your game a little bit here. What What do you think after, a, you know, you got a dose of professional basketball there in New Zealand, now coming to the NBA to live out your dream, uh, the biggest adjustment in your game that you think you have to make for this next level? Uh, I think the biggest adjustment I'm going to have to make and what I've been working on the last six months with Mike is my shot. Uh, I feel as if I can knock down open shots, um, you know, that's just going to create, you know, open angles and open lanes for my strength, which is my speed and athleticism. So, you know, if I can knock down open shots and guys have to run out on me, um, I don't think there's really any, I don't think there's a lot of people that can stop me on a closeout, you know, going by and making a play. I want to just follow up real quick. Sorry, fellas, about that. The it's talking about playing with Nicola and the way you play up and down so fast with the ability that you have, RJ is. I mean, that's got to be something you're looking forward to as well, right? You're usually uh, that guy looking for the outlet pass, but Nikola Jokic, she can make those long full court passes. That's that's got to. I mean, once you get on the floor with those guys, complement what you want to do running up and down the floor, right? Yeah, for sure. I kind of think of it as like you know Tom Brady and Randy Moss. So you know, once <laughs> Jokic gets that ball off the rim. Uh, he don't got to look for me. He'll just know I'll be down there already. Uh, hey, I was going to say, listen, you, you mentioned this a while ago watching the bubble games and, and seeing the Nuggets fight, you know, not once but two series down 3-1. Um, and, and, you know, being a guard yourself or a guy that kind of plays on that perimeter, some of the stuff you watched Jamal Murray do in some of those games, were you, were you sitting there with you and your, your family or your boys going, oh, my God. I mean, what, what was some of your reaction watching watching the way Jamal Murray did some of his stuff? Oh, no. Nah, like, I thought it was crazy. Um, I remember probably you probably go look back at my Twitter tweeting, like, you know, like, he's not from this planet. Like, he was just playing, you know, out of his mind. So, you know, me and my family and friends were all watching those games. And, you know, it got to the point where it was like, okay, like, we know the Lakers are really good and, you know, they're going to, you know, win these games. Not against the Nuggets, but in the, the series. But it was almost to the point, like, hey, like, don't sleep. Where's the Jamal Murray game at? Where's the Denver game at? Uh, I want to ask you just this last one for me, RJ, and again, appreciate the time. The, the route that you took, and Ryan asked you earlier, I mean, you're, you're a 19-year-old man. You're, you're, you're figuring this stuff out, and the way the world is changing, how young men have opportunities to take the next step. Do you think guys in your position moving forward are, are going to look more to what you and LaMelo did and, and maybe have more guys take that route than we've seen in the past? I think for sure. I think you, you know, you'll look back on this five years and you know see the progression and um, the ability that me and Lamelo uh, have made on um, the strides that we have made uh, at a young age in the NBA. And I think a lot of guys will, you know, either you know if it's the G League or if it's overseas or it's just playing against the best competition at a young age uh, is only going to get you ready for the next level. Hey, playing against men, man. Playing against men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Day, but 
RJ, man, I just want to tell you, make sure you invest and save your money. You're a millionaire now, but be a millionaire when you're 45, 50. Invest in duplex, real estate. Take care of your money, young man. That's for sure. Thank you. Yeah. RJ, we appreciate you, man. Again, a congratulations. Uh, welcome to the Nuggets family, and we wish you nothing but the best moving forward, dude. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it.